Okay, so today basically what we we'll, we'll be looking at is chapter 12 of the book, uh, which basically is about uh, building a flex, uh, a, building a dashboard uh, to visualize partial data, uh, and we'll be making use uh, of the flex dashboard. So like basically the learning objective is just uh, like simple. We are going to learn how to use uh, the flex uh, dashboard uh, to visualize the fine particulate air pollution levels in each of the world countries uh, as in uh, 2016. And first of all, uh, the, the, the flex dashboard package uh, is simply work uh, behind the skin, just as the knowledge we learned be, be initially when I introduced uh, the, the R markdown. It's, it's basically an R markdown file with an extension .rmd, but it can also be .qmd, which is like a quarto, if we are using quarto to compile those documents. So basically, uh, this, uh, uh, this .rmd file with the R markdown file, we need to still have uh, that, that general idea of a normal working R markdown file, because looking at the R markdown file documents, we always have three components uh, in the R markdown file. We need to have the YAML, which is always uh, se uh, separated with the three back slashes where we specify the YAML. And within the YAML of that file, we are going to specify the title of the document like in the, the flex dashboard, we are going to give it a title. Then we are going to also specify the output format that we want to get our outputs. So we need to specify the output format. Then we also have uh, within the documents, we have the code chunk where we can embed our R code. And we also have where we can also embed text, text outputs within those reports because the R markdown report, we can integrate both text uh, we can also pass in our data, our visualization. We can embed all these things in one single document where we can uh, we can use in communicating our insights in which we have uh, generated from our data analysis process. But we they also talk about uh, like uh, how we can also format this R markdown document. We can use uh, we can uh, format this document maybe in bold using the the one the two the two asterisks, which we are going to know that that text is going to be bold. We can choose to format this text, maybe using italics by using one asterisk. There are some several customization, but, but basically we need to have a working knowledge of the R markdown before we can fully work with the flex dashboard. But once we have a good background with the with R markdown, working with R markdown file, uh, dealing working with flex dashboard, the whole thing become very easy for us to work uh, with the flex dashboard. So that is basically uh, what uh, this uh, chapter entails. So the next part, uh, we are going to look at uh, the layout of a flex dashboard. So just as I said earlier, in the arm, the flex dashboard is still an R markdown file. Like here, yeah, this is our YAML. This is our YAMI where we have the title, which is a multiple column for here. We have the output, which is flex dashboard, column, column, where we are calling uh, the function, the flex dashboard within the namespace, which is the flex underscore dashboard. So here, what we are doing here, we are having the, for us to, for us to customize each column that appear in the flex dashboard. There are two approach in which we can deal with this. Either we choose to use these back dashes to specify each column, or we can also make use of the pound sign. But to me, I, I normally in the book, they do explain we can use the dash, but to me, I normally prefer the pound sign because it is very easy. So when I just see, one pound sign, I know that that is going to be the first page in the flex dashboard package. So when I see two pound sign, I know that that is going to be the first column. So when I see two pound sign, I know this is going to be the first column in the flex dashboard. So when I see three pound sign, I know that I'm talking about the row. So I want to put this, I, this element within the, I want to embed them within the row. So for this, we have column, 
They also have data width, which is going to be the width of the data is going to be 600 because it, the width cannot go beyond 1000. So if this is 600, we want to embed, uh, we, we are going to have a, uh, a title, which is component one. Component one is going to the visualization for component one. We are going to put the code within this chunk. So when we go to column, data width is going to be 400. So we are going to put our title here, which is component two, then the visual, the code, the graphics is going to be in the R code chunk. So we are going to embed all this in the R code chunk. So they say the layout can also be specified row wise rather than column wise by adding in the YAML options orientation, which is rows. Then we can check for, they do explain that we can get additional information from the R Markdown website because for us to really uh, become, uh, uh, for us to really understand how to work with the Flex dashboard, we need to have a, a solid background, a good foundation in working with R Markdown file. So once we have a good knowledge on how to, how to work with the R Markdown file, it becomes very easy when we transition uh, to work with the Flex dashboard, it becomes uh, very easy. So, so what are the dashboard components? So, just as we have seen the R Markdown, the, the, uh, uh, the dashboard component, we can have interactive JavaScript data visualization on what HTML widget example, using the HTML uh, widgets. We can also have charts created with standard R graphics. So we can embed all these charts inside our, our Flex dashboard. We can also have tables where we can embed this table. Either we, we can use uh, the Kenneth R cable function. And in this case, uh, the, the table is going to be a static table whereby when we want to create a, a static table, then we can go, uh, go with this function. But when we want to create a table in which we can, we can interact with those table, then we can choose to work with the, the DT package where we can have uh, uh, the data table functions such that we can be able to what, interact uh, with those table. So we can also have value boxes created with value box function that uh, display single values uh, uh, with a title and an icon. We can also have gauges that display values on a meter within a specified range. Uh, they also specify the text, image, and also equations. We can uh, embed this also within our flex dashboard uh, that we are that we are creating. We can also have navigation bar with links to social services, maybe like Facebook. We can also have Instagrams and also Twitter. We can have navigation links uh, to those pages. We embed all uh, within our Flex uh, dashboard uh, package. So, so this is an example of what the dashboard in which we'll be creating when in the demonstration uh, section. This is a this is uh, what we'll be reproducing at the end uh, of our discussion today. So we, first of all, the first thing we, we need to do, know how to get in, get the data and the wall map, because the wall map we are going to be using uh, the R natural earth package in order to get uh, the, the shape file of the wall. Then we are going to create uh, the visualization using the flex dashboard and we can create the dashboard by defining the layout and adding what the visualization. So this is an example. We are going to create uh, this. We, we are going to reproduce this. We are also going to put the tables and also the histogram. So th this is just like a, a, a pictorial summary of what I will be, uh, will be uh, covering uh, today. So first of all, uh, before we can start we need to we need to get our we need to what get our data that we'll be using uh, to create our flex dashboard. So we first we are we are loading two package the R natural ads where we are going to use to get uh, the shape file of the wall. We also are going to make use of the SP package, which is for the I think the spatial uh, polygon. So. So we are using the, the any underscore countries function from the from the R natural ed package. 
So if we do not specify anything, we are going to get the shape file uh, of the entire world where we are storing that in the object called map. Then we have the names of all the map. Then we want to subset. We want to subset the names of all the map. In this case, we want to convert this ISO underscore three. We want to put it all in, we want to capitalize it. We name it as ISO three. We do the same thing for names of map. We have names of map. We want to what, rename the name column. We want to give it uh, the new name. So when we plot, once we do all this, once we plot that object uh, using the base uh, graphics, so it's going to give us this it's warning. Okay, coordinate reference system has no comments. Okay, so it's going to give us uh, it's going to give us uh, the the shape file of the entire world. So the next thing for us to do is for us to get for us to get our air pollution indicators. So we are using the web search uh, function from this uh, the web start package. So we have the web search. Then the pattern we are searching for in the web is for pollution. Yeah, and this it's pollution. The World Bank. Yes. 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 WB. Pro. Yes, so we want to save this in a new object called indicators. So we are saving this in the new object called indicators. Then, so we have a new function WB from the same web stats. Then we have indicator, which is, these are all the indicator. The start dates should be from 2016. The end dates should also be 2016. Then we assign that to a new object called D. Then we look for all the head of the D. We check for the first six rows, which is, we have our ISO three, the date, the value, and also what the indicator. Then these are the pollutions. So for us to, we need to now use our map dollar sign, uh, the pollution. We want we want to subset all the all map all the matches in map dollar sign ISO three and D dollar sign D. So anywhere we have anywhere we have matches, we want to check for all the pattern in this ISO three that is, that are also here. We want to return all all the value. We want to assign it into what map dollar sign PM 2.5, which is uh, the air pollution levels, which are all the air pollution levels. So we want to save it in this new column. So, so we can see first rows of the map by typing head of map. So, but I'm so sorry I did not type head for the map. I didn't, we just type head Fine. map. Uh, we are going to see. We are going to see the first six row. We are also going to see the particulate air pollution levels in which we have extracted uh, from from here yeah, from this function where we used to subset it. So the next thing for us to do is for for us to create our table using the the DT data table DT package. So here we wrote the library which is DT. Then we have then we have DT, we are calling the function within the namespace, data table. Then we have our map at data, okay? So for that, we, we are getting this, we are considering all the rows, but only uh, these, three, these three column, ISO3, the name, and also uh, the particulate air pollution, then we set the row names to false because we do not want the row name. Then the options, we said we specify the options for the table. Then we say it should be list, page length should be 10. So it's going to show us the first 10. It's going to show us uh, the first 10. It's going to show us the first. Uh, 10 rows. The first 10 rows. 
it's not scrolling down. Why? Wow. I don't know. That's fine. Why is it angry? Well, that's fine. We get it. Right. Okay. No worries. I guess. So now for the leaflet parts, this is the, the map, the visualization using uh, the leaflet package, which is like for interactive map. We, we load our library. Here we are working with the color palettes. We are look at color bean. Then palettes, we are using the Veridis domain. We are using map uh, dollars and PM 2.5. These are all the values there. Then the beans should be sequenced from zero to the maximum of map dollar sign PM 2.5. Then if there are any missing data, any dot remove true to, to, to omit uh, the missing data, then plus 10, then the buy, which is gonna be like the break in between, it should be by, by 10. Then, we also have the labels. I think this function is going to deal with the label so that once we are hovering through that map, we can get the label for the for the name, the PM 2.5. We need, we need to use this map label and we use the paste zero function. These are the string for the country. This is for the this is the line break. This is for PM 2.5. This is for PM 2.5. There is a break, then we are using the HTML tools, then it's gonna to be HTML. So this is going to, so that once we are hovering through the map, we can get uh, the label. So we start leaflets where we pass in our object, which is the map. And then we are adding the tiles and then we are setting the view. The longitude is zero, the latitude is 30. Then we are going to zoom in by two and then we are adding the polygons. We are adding the polygons the, around the map. Then we say fill color. Here we are using the anonymous uh, function till the pal uh, PM 2.5. So we want to fill uh, those map by the particulate air pollution. Then the color is going to be white. I think this is for the control now. Yes, yes. Then the fill opacity should be 0 0.7. Then the labels, tilde labels, because we have specified the labels up here. We have specified the labels, so it's going to grab uh, those labels there as an anonymous function. Then the highlights, so once the user click on those map, it's going to highlight from specific areas. So we say highlight options, then the color should always be black. Then bring to front should be true. And then we are adding the legend. We are adding the legend. PAL is equals to PAL. Then values is still the PM 2.5. Then the opacity is 0 0.7. Then the title should be PM 2.5. So when we run that, uh, this is no, this is the, re uh, the resultant uh, visualization we are going to see. As we are interacting, we can see his country, Saudi Arabia. We can see the particulate air pollution levels for Saudi Arabia. We can over into another country. We can get uh, the information. So as a user, they are interacting with this map. They are deriving uh, key insights uh, from this map. And this is uh, quite uh, different like when we are working with a static map because static map, once we just render it, uh, we cannot get any insight. So, so once we click on specific areas, we can see that this is Australia. We can see the particulate air pollution levels for Australia. I think we should run that. Okay. If I have to redo like what do you do? I think like, yeah, we do not need like that level of precision. Yes. <laughs> we can like modify it to run it more like, yes. you know, maybe. Yes. But yeah, it's fine. So we can also zoom in. So the next section we'll be looking at is the is the histogram before we go into the demonstration. Yeah. So like for the histogram, we also create, we are going to use uh, the ggplot2. 
Then we use the GG function, the data is coming from the map. We are using the add sign to assess the data. Then the aesthetics, then we X, we put the, the particulate air pollution. Then what are we creating is a histogram. So once we put job histogram, we just uh, generate our, our histogram. Can we improve the bit? Yes. But that's fine. Okay, so I think uh, I don't know if there are any comments before we go into the actual demo where we run all the whole code. No, I'm good. It's good. I didn't know like the trick with leaflet with border white, and then when you click, they become black and it's more visible. I think it's good, like the highlights you showed. I think like I will use it. Yes. So you can see. Yeah, this like this yes. white and the when you go over it, I like it black. Yes. Uh, I like it. I think it's good. <laughs> it's make it like well and like, clear. Yeah. Okay, so let me just share my uh -huh. studio. Is it flex dashboard? Okay, so the flex dashboard is here. Okay, so we just click on go to maybe five, my new five. But well, I've not tried the quarter way, yeah, so yeah. let me stick uh, with the R markdown way. So my R markdown. <laughs> from templates uh flex dashboard yeah you see I... so this is the default so it's going to give us the yaml yeah where we put our title then the outputs is going to be flex uh, dashboard then default orientation is always columns, but we can specify it row-wise. Vertical layouts should fill. Then this is the setup. This is the package. So the column data width here, we are using 650. So this is going to be, this is going to be the first, uh, the first charts that will appear in the, the first charts that, which is chart A. We can just put our code here. We will input our code here. Then the column data width here is 350. Since we have 650 uh, plus 350, it's going to be 1,000. So we can't go beyond uh, 1,000. So we are going to put that there. Then we are we can have two charts here. Here in this example, we can have two charts here because this is going to be the second column in the flex dashboard. So we can say, okay, in the first column, I want to embed maybe three types of visualization will be in the first column. In the second column also, you might choose to put three different types of visualization in the second column. So we just host it, maybe you can host it maybe somewhere, we just share it so somebody can just uh, click on it and they, they interact, uh, they interact uh, with, the, with the visualization. So, let me just uh, grab uh, the code in which we'll be using uh, for the demo. So we can just click on it and interact uh, with that visualization. Where are we? Where is my script? Oh, flex dashboard, okay. So what we we'll just do here, we just paste this yeah, from what I got from the book, this is the, the this is the title, which is yeah. air pollution PM 2.5 mean annual exposure for 2016. Then the source of this is World Bank HTTPS. This is the URL for that uh, data set. Then the output is going to be Flex uh, dashboard, Flex dashboard. Then these are the packages in which we are using. We are using the all natural earth to get the wall shape file. 
the web stats to get the, the air pollution from the World Bank uh, data uh, websites, the leaflet package for the map, DT for the table, ggplot2 for our static uh, visualization. Then this, we have already seen this, we are getting the world shape file. So these are all what we have already seen. So in the first column, we are having column, which is data width is 600. Uh, map. This is the, the, uh, the map, which is gonna be the first column. Uh, column one, row one is going to be map, where we are going to have our, our map. Then if we go to column data width, we are having 400, that is for column, the second column. Then within the second column, we are going to embed both the table and the histogram. So this is going to be uh, the column two, column two, row one. This is gonna be column two, row one. We are going to embed the table. This is gonna be column two, row two. We are going to embed uh, this histogram. So when I save this, I can save it, this as my demo. For today, I save it as demo, so I just need it. If you wanna save time, like next time, you know, just like win a bit of time. What you can yes. do is like you can just have a script that import the data. Okay. And you save the data in a, um, a binary file, and you just call it because okay, yeah, I just put everything source into that the, script. Yeah. So you you save like the time. Uh, you know, like. Uh, you you do not like every time you commit. You are like calling the data from the web. Yes. And updating it. And it's in demo HTML now. Okay. So, so this is. Yep. This is the final output that we we can see the air pollution. We can see uh, the URL. But the problem with this output the url is not clickable because i cannot click on it it will take me uh, open this. it in browsers try to open in browser to see this is the browser if i click on it it's not no, no, directing me um, open in browser on the top left let's see if it changed okay. something let me reshare that's fine no worries this is the browser Okay, it's still the same thing. Yes, yeah, so you can click. Yeah, it's a bit problematic. I agree. And if you control, but it's good. It's work. It works. So, so yeah. you can just click over through. Still yeah, the I same think like we just way. have like you know one one problem that we're gonna solve. I think with shiny. Yes. Yes. It's like it's not connected. Yes, yes. If you want yes. to go to Afghanistan or Angola, it will not highlight Angola. See on the old table, for example. Okay. Yes, I think yes. Like we will solve that with Shiny. Yes. Yeah, just an introduction. But yeah, because yeah. the table is supposed to also link us to the map. Yeah, that's that's the goal. <laughs> there, there is another in HTML that's called cross table cross tape cross talk, I think, that allow you to do that. Uh, let me put a link in the chat. Cross talk. But yeah, it's good. Okay. Talk, I will put that into the chat. Yeah. So yeah, you are like right. so yeah, even if you do not use shiny and use crosstalk, if you go on the website of crosstalk, yeah, you see like they, they show you an example, and you can also use okay. like the um, you can also like click on something like on the map. Check it out. Or highlight, uh, you know, if you highlight the, the table, you will highlight the stuff. It's not always super clear, but it's work. Thank you.
So you will uh, you will be able like to click on the table and it will highlight the the pins on the map. Okay. I think that is all what I got for today. Next week we'll be discussing about yeah. shining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That we will go. This is this is what we'll go later. Yeah. But okay, well that was good. Thanks, Alma Femi. I I think Federica is here now. You have you have some question, Federica? I think she's good. It was it was a good presentation. Nice and clear. Thank you. So we can see it. Uh, we can discuss that uh, shiny. Who is doing shiny next week? I'm the one. I'm still the one. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Well, uh, I'm waiting. I, I will be ready for uh, next week. <laughs> I'm I will still... take that board. Um, my, 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 my crappy shiny uh, app. That's okay. sometimes I play with it. And uh, I, will, I, will, I will try like to reframe it as a flex dashboard, as an experiment. Well, it's like flex dashboard is easier. Yeah, I think you're... it's super easy, no? <laughs> yeah, that's good. Well, thanks. And see you next week. Okay, thank you. See you next Bye. week. See you next week. Thanks a lot for me.